from amazing paellas to outdoor markets, where you can get your fill on literally anything, including some Star Wars drinks. This is Edinburgh. Now, as soon as we arrived in Edinburgh, we stopped into this beautiful outdoor Sunday market. So Edinburgh has a Sunday only market and today is only Sunday that we're gonna be in Edinburgh. I, can we eat all the things? Can, are we eating here? Yes. From plant-based foods to locally sourced meats, this Sunday market had just about everything, including a poke bowl spot. This is gonna be really, really bad for my stomach and for my wallet. I'm pretty excited right now, guys. As you walk through the market and take in all the wonderful pastries and treats, you're greeted with this aroma of saffron and rosemary built upon this beautiful paella. The owner and sous chef were making these all day long and they were absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited for this paella right now, holy crap. It's like warm. Oh my God. That's really good. <laughs> As it gets everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Wow. Dude, that's so much flavor. It was around 40 degrees Fahrenheit at the time while we were eating this paella and being able to just go all in in this wonderful, or should I say lovely paella. The flavors of saffron really came through. The hint of rosemary right on top really brought all of your senses together. The rice was cooked beautifully. The chicken was tender. The vegetables were absolutely delicious. This paella is worth every single penny that we paid and it was only around five pounds. Come, come eat it. Spanish street food guy. Lovely paella. After stuffing our faces, we came across all this beautiful fish, some amazing produce, and of course, some mead. We're in Maine a lot, but not yes. from Oregon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, please, actually. Ooh, that's strong. After tasting a few meads and buying a couple of bottles, I came across scotch eggs. And after having worked for a Scottish chef, I know I need to try these scotch eggs. So if you guys have never had a scotch egg before, it's uh, egg wrapped in sausage and then deep fried. They are one of my favorite things and we're gonna get one. So uh, black pudding, black pudding scotch egg. Mm -hmm. I feel like it'd be better warm. <laughs> it would definitely be better warm. But still, the flavor is really good. It's like super jammy. Hmm. Oh, good. I will buy that again. And after all of that protein, we had to try these absolutely gorgeous plant-based desserts. All vegan-based? Oh, they're all plant-based? Everything's plant-based. I'm excited. Okay, cool. So we're just we're, we're just leaving this pretty amazing market behind us, and we have a vegan millionaire brownie in hand. Uh, it's exceptionally cold, but uh, I could I could easily spend another 30 minutes here eating. No problem. This has been very uncomfortable walking. Just so you guys are aware. It may have been uncomfortable, but let's be honest, you needed to burn off those calories. And after burning off a good amount of calories from this walk, we landed in our beautiful flat, three stories up in a very questionable building in downtown. And after unloading all of our gear, we started our jaunt through the city and came across the Pop-Up Geeks, an awesome bar that has these really cool themed menus every single month. And this month's theme was Star Wars. To our delight, we were able to try out some really cool customized drinks from the Pop-Up Geeks, and I was all excited about this. But before we dive into these gins, I wanna say thank you to this week's sponsor, Curology. Curology is a skincare service that makes skincare super easy. When you use my link down below to head over to Curology, you're gonna be greeted with a survey that you can fill out to customize your very own skincare by your very own provider. For instance, I have very large pores and oily skin, so I made sure to fill that out in the survey so that way when they got all of my information, they could send me my very own skincare and custom creams. I received my cleanser, my very own formula, and a moisturizer for before I go to bed. As someone who never really paid attention to skincare, this just makes it super streamlined and super easy, and the best part is that they just send it to you every month, so that way you don't have to think about whether or not you need to go get more. If you use my link down below, you're going to get your very own custom skincare pack Package for just $4.95 shipping and handling. They want you to be super comfortable using their stuff and they make it super easy for you to do that. Having a new nighttime routine every single night and making sure that I do it every single night has really improved my skincare over the past few months. Curology makes all of your skincare super easy, super affordable, and really, really convenient. 
So make sure to check out that link down below at curology.com slash chefpk4 to get started for just $4.95 shipping and handling and get everything taken care of. Seriously, it's really, really easy. This is what happens when you're on vacation and you have no plans and you just happen upon a pop-up Star Wars bar. And because I like tasting menus, I went for the Bright Martini Trio where they gave me a selection of gins that were made locally and I had to try to guess which each one of them was, but I'm really bad at that, so I just kept drinking them. So apparently I have to figure out these gins. No idea. It's pretty good. I don't know anything about alcohol. Ooh. That's strong. That's really strong. <laughs> So apparently they changed the theme of this entire pop-up every three to four months. And the next one they're doing is The Witcher. And I, I really wish we were gonna be here for that. The bartenders were even nice enough to let Rachel try some really exclusive whiskeys. If you guys are ever in Edinburgh, make sure you check out Pop-Up Geeks, find out what they're hosting that month. I know the next month they were doing a Witcher setup and I really wish we were here for that. And after we were ready to fight the Empire, we ran into the Scott Monument, a monument dedicated to Sir Walter Scott. And this was on the way to Calton Hill, this beautiful setup on top of one of their larger, well, hills that gave you these beautiful views of the city. And just to give you a sense of scope, you can see the Scott Monument right Right now from where we are from Calton Hill. We were treated to really awesome weather today and we had these beautiful views of King's Seat, which is this really neat thing that looks like where Mufasa christened Simba. But after spending a few hours at Calton Hill, there really isn't too much to see in that government area, so we made our way back down to the Royal Mile. The Royal Mile is basically where everything happened in downtown Edinburgh. It could lead you to seeing people juggling fire in the streets, which was very entertaining by the way and slightly dangerous because I can't do it. But we ended up finding our way Way down a back alley and into a place called Wings. Now you could guess by the name that this place serves chicken wings and you would think chicken wings in Scotland and yes, look at this place. It looks absolutely fantastic. The menu was wonderful. It had a ton of different flavors. The walls were plastered with Goku, Cloud, Edward Scissorhands, Homer Simpson, and everyone in between. Even the menu was littered with little tributes to the nerd kingdom, and I absolutely love them for it. But look at these flavors. How do you choose which flavor to pick from your, oh, that's how you're gonna do it? You're just gonna get tequila first? So good. Very sweet. Mm -hmm. It's like summertime. It's like summertime in San Diego. And while I was enjoying my summertime, our wings hit the table. The first set of wings were boneless buffalo wings with a blue cheese dressing. The second set were a habanero dusted wing. And the third were a lemon peppercorn dusted wing. And the server hooked us up with a ranch mango dip. My mouth is watering. I'm just even smelling it. The dusted wings ended up being my absolute favorite part of the wing because they were super crispy, dusted really nicely with their spices. The lemon just hit different, but the habanero pepper powder just hit me in a spot I didn't think was possible. I absolutely loved all of the wings from Wings, and if you're ever in Edinburgh, this place, this place has every flavor you could imagine, and you could combine flavors. So good. That's why we decided to order a fourth basket of wings. This one is the lemon peppercorn dusted wing with buffalo sauce drizzled onto it. Just the, the tanginess of the buffalo, plus the tanginess of the lemon and the spiciness of the peppercorns, everything came together so well. The flavors just hits you right in the mouth with the crispy, tender, hot wing that I didn't think was found in Edinburgh. Probably some of the best wings I've ever eaten. And after about a dozen wings each, we made our way to Greyfriars Graveyard. This graveyard has stood for hundreds of years and I believe it's haunted so I didn't really film the inside of it because I'm kind of weird like that. We're finally in our flat in Inverness and we Inverness, look at- huh? No wait, not Inverness. We're finally in our flat in Edinburgh and look at the, look at that beautiful view out the window. Finally, it feels super relaxing where we are. Uh, last night, we had lots and lots of noise from the bar downstairs so, but uh, it's time for this. And this is one of the beautiful pieces of treasure we had nabbed from the beautiful Edinburgh Sunday Market. This is a plant-based millionaire style brownie. The chocolate was super thick, the caramel sauce was rich and creamy, the brownie itself was dense but still so chewy and gorgeous. How is this vegan? Is it pure chocolate? It's so good. It's like really fudge, fudgy, not overly sweet. 
really creamy, but it doesn't taste like heavy like a brownie, right? It's super good. Uh, we may have to try to make these vegan millionaire brownie. But the night was young and we needed some fancy cocktails at Kin. I don't know, I guess they have good cocktails here. So this place is super cute. I don't think you can Probably see can't see anything <laughs> of me right now. And yes, it was incredibly dark in this cocktail lounge that sat in basically a basement environment, but the bartender was an old chef who just wanted to start making drinks and those drinks were amazing. It looks like bone marrow. That's so cool. And as I enjoyed my smoked whiskey sour, Rachel had her gorgeous gin straight up with a twist of grapefruit. We made our way to Basement. Basement is actually a Mexican restaurant that we found in Edinburgh, and I was pleasantly surprised with everything that we had at Basement. Not only did they have a really interesting menu that was filled with tacos, both Mexican and Spanish foods, it had a crazy tequila menu, so of course, we ended up getting just a touch of tequila. And because I am a fan of Blancos, I went with the Ha Blanco, which was this crisp, light, really easy to drink tequila that came with agave juice to help wash it down. That's nice. Oh, that's sweet. That's interesting. Kind of go back and forth, right? So I kind of go from this to this. Yeah. It's really nice with this because it's like, makes it really fresh. And as we were sipping tequila, our food hit the table. We ended up getting a jicama slaw beef shin tacos that were to die for, and a watermelon feta arugula salad because we needed some greens. The beef shin tacos were wrapped with a corn tortilla. They were incredibly tender. They had to have been braised for at least a dozen hours to get the tenderness behind a beef shin taco like that. The flavors were really bold. They were easy to eat. It didn't feel super heavy or greasy. And it was one of those tacos that you had to pick up and then just completely finish before you decided to put it down. Oh yeah, we had salad. The, sal the salad was pretty good too. I wish we would have gotten more tacos because those duck tacos look really good, but we gotta go get kebab now. So we just saw a basement bar and that was fantastic Mexican food. You guys absolutely need to go. And now we're gonna go find some Turkish food. Uh, hopefully get some kebabs. Let's, I, I can't, I'm, it's, it's late, we're gonna get some. And this is the reason why I decided not to order more tacos because I absolutely had to get some kebab. We found ourselves at Ada, a pretty traditional Turkish restaurant that had all of their skewers basically on tap. You got to pick which skewer you wanted. They cooked it fresh for you right on their charcoal flames. And once you were done, they sent you on your way all wrapped in bread with a little salad. So I got myself a kufta wrap. I haven't had kufta in a very long time, especially as a wrap. Hopefully it's not too much food because I am almost full. We're almost there. We still need to find dessert tonight. No. Come on, we're gonna get dessert. Okay, I'll eat dessert at the at the apartment. That'll be fine. Why are you eating it right now? Why are you not eating? Well, I don't even know. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something very nice about walking down the street at 11 p.m. At 11 p.m. Shady ass alley. Eating a kufta wrap in a uh, not so great part of town. It's fine. It's okay. I ended up finishing the kufta wrap back at the apartment just so that way I could enjoy it in the safety of the kitchen. And this was an awesome nightcap to finish a day of lots of walking and lots of eating before we hit. So we're headed to the pantry today to grab some breakfast. This is the place we tried to go to yesterday uh, that had a line at the door. So hopefully we make it there right before they open is the goal. Um, I don't know, I don't know what they have. I think it's just supposed to be a really good sausage. And really good sausage is an understatement for this absolutely beautiful and quaint small restaurant in Edinburgh. This was across the way from that market that we were at on Sunday. And now that it is Monday morning, they have no wait. So we just walked right in and I was pleased to find a big old breakfast with black pudding. Are we getting black pudding? Yes. I think we're gonna get the black pudding with the breakfast and rare breed pork sausage. I don't know what that means, but if it's anything like the bacon we've had in, where was it, Inverness? Mm -hmm. No, that was in Perth. That would be delicious. Yeah, I'm excited. But it is nine in the morning, so we need a nice macchiato to start. This is what a real macchiato looks like, Starbucks. Right here. 
I don't know what you guys are making over there. Slap back that macchiato like a Neanderthal to enjoy all of its deliciousness because when it hit the table, I was ready to eat. Rachel had ordered a vegetarian option which came with sweet potatoes, roasted chilies, and some egg. I ordered the Neanderthal version which came with a bunch of meat and black pudding. Oh my God. Hold on, we're gonna go straight for the black pudding. Ooh, it's super crumbly. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or not. Is it good? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that tastes like to me. Definitely has some like breading in it. Rachel's mouth is very full. The mm -hmm. on it is really good. Oh my God, it smells so good. Yeah. Dude, hold on, hold on. Don't eat that yet. Don't eat that yet. Stop everything you're doing. So yesterday we were here, like we said, and there was a massive line out the door and I can definitely see why. This is so good. And I didn't know Rachel's was vegetarian. It's so good. I kind of destroyed mine, but. It's so good. If you guys are ever out here, I don't think they need the advertisement, but pantry over in Edinburgh is phenomenal. I'm gonna eat this. And I have to give you the yolk shot because that's what we're all really here for. Those beautiful yolks, the golden deliciousness covering everything. As I continue to stuff my mouth full of black pudding, sausage, egg, and bread, I cleared my plate. Rachel had a little left. I just couldn't finish it for her. And of course, when we went to go pay for our food, we were treated to all of this goodness that I had to say no to. But thank you to the pantry for being absolutely amazing. And we will be back. We promise. But first, I need to try the Karen Gorms Coffee Co. I hear that they have an amazing brew and there's something about them that I've really been attracted to and it's probably this really cool yellow that they've had in a lot of their advertising. When you walk in, you're greeted with all of their wonderful brews, a few bites to eat, but we're really here for this chocolate that I really did not want to buy. No, I did not buy more chocolate simply because I felt like I've already eaten so much on this trip. So I settled for Rachel's turmeric latte instead of the latte that I ordered. Nope, nope. Yeah. it's mine now. But the flat white that I ordered, I was completely happy with, especially with my beautiful little heart on top. This is delicious. I think I like Rachel's turmeric latte a little bit better though. That is pretty fantastic. She wasn't even gonna get coffee. And I was like, oh look, turmeric latte. And then she instantly ordered it. Uh, I think, um, I think I'm kind of jealous of her latte, but this flat white is delicious. We might have to go back and get her a sweater and buy more coffee. The day is mine, I've taken her coffee. It's not coffee. Latte. Latte. And while sipping our coffees, we made our way back to the Royal Mile because there was so much to see here that we just missed out on on the first day. Rachel tried to make her way to the Scotch Whiskey Experience, but unfortunately they had tour times that didn't line up with our day currently. So we made our way to Edinburgh Castle. This castle is at the top of Royal Mile and that had a lot to do with defensive positions, to be honest, so that's kind of cool to see. The castle itself was massive. We made our way towards the front of it. We were able to tour the courtyard area which was free to enter into. But after seeing the courtyard and after seeing the prices in particular, at 30 pounds per person, we decided that the total of 60 pounds would be better spent on food, whiskey, and Harry Potter merchandise. The Great Wizard was a store dedicated to all things Harry Potter. And when I say all things Harry Potter, I truly mean all things Harry Potter. I mean, of course we had to come into the Great Wizard. The store itself was loaded from everything from beanies to the numerous selection of books. I didn't think that they had this many versions of Harry Potter. They had everything from the picture book versions of it to the gold line versions of the books to this Hedwig bag that I really tried to convince Rachel to buy, but she refused to because it was a touch expensive, but I still wanted her to buy it to a crazy selection of wands. I've only seen more wands at the Universal Studios Harry Potter experience, but I will say this place in particular had an awesome selection of wands. But what really caught my eye was the Harry Potter chess set that I wanted to spend 500 pounds on, but I just, I just couldn't. I really want the wizard's chess. I don't even play chess. I would still display this thing. And after making a run for it with our wallets intact, we decided to take our money and go scotch shopping. One of the local shops that we had visited had a tremendous amount of mini bottles of scotch that you could pick up from different areas of Scotland. You're able to taste and try as many as you would please. And they even poured some from behind the counter. So that was a really neat thing that they could do. Scotch has such a variety of flavors, smokiness, peat, everything in between. But since you can't really drink in the street, we made our 
way into a small pub where we were able to order a few shots of scotch to just kind of mellow out the day. I also ordered a Guinness with a shot of Baileys with Jameson mixed into it because I really wanted to chug this. For some reason, anytime I roll into a Scottish or Irish pub, this is something I have to do and you have to drink this as quickly as possible otherwise it will start to curdle. And after stuffing my face full of Guinness, Baileys, and Jameson, we had to order a thing of chips or I guess french fries is what people call them now. But no french fry is complete without fry sauce. 50% ketchup, 50% mayonnaise. Then use your fork like a Neanderthal and start dipping away. The fats and the acids and the crispiness just went so well with the alcohol. And after our uh, light snack, we made our way to the National Museum of Scotland, a free exhibit that has a tremendous amount to do. So we decided to pop into the National Museum of Scotland and it's free entry and uh, it's a zoo. It's nuts in here. Let's go see some cool stuff. And cool stuff we did see. The National Museum of Scotland hosts thousands of objects from not only around Scotland, but around the world. You can find things from old working tools to preserved animals, dinosaurs. The inside atrium was absolutely breathtaking to behold, but not as breathtaking as this cereal bowl displayed in the middle. Perfect size. This is a good bathtub. This place is freaking rad. Like, look at look at this. Rachel, what is that? That's a sperm whale. That's a whale? That's a sperm whale. My curiosity peaked as soon as she said, whale. Did I get you there? I probably did. You guys are so dirty. This was for food. And I was not incorrect in my assumption that this truly is a cereal bowl. This is the world's largest cereal bowl, right here. What I enjoyed the most about the National Museums of Scotland was the variety of exhibits that they had. Everything from stuffed polar bears to this cute little arctic fox to this very menacing crab that I would not want to encounter in my worst nightmares because look at how large this thing is. Of course, Rachel found her rock exhibit because she really enjoys rocks, but look at how cool they look. So there's a scale over here that uh, tells you how much you weigh according to animals. Let's, let's see. Gray wolf, I'll, yeah, I'll take that. After comparing myself to a wolf, we continued to tour the National Museum of Scotland and continued to run into things you won't really see outside of it. Like whatever this is, I don't know what this is. It looks really menacing and really amazing at the same time. We found Dolly the cloned sheep. Dolly was the first successfully cloned sheep and now she is on full display after being stuffed. We spent nearly five hours in the museum and after around five hours, we weren't able to explore everything. And we decided that we needed to go sit down, relax, hit up the brew lab, experience a wonderful cup of coffee, and who knows, maybe some sweets. The Brew Lab is a coffee house that really prides themselves on the gram, making sure that you know how to brew coffee with their coffee classes. They have all the equipment you would ever need to get your coffee fix started and these really interesting color theories and wheels on flavors you could try. Even their menus were displayed like a chemistry experiment, which completely goes over my head, but what doesn't go over my head are these brownies, these caramel fudgy brownies and blueberry crumble cake. We sat down and had a view of the barista, and of course, being unable to wait, I tried my brownie before the coffee had arrived. The brownie was gooey, caramelly, and chocolatey. Rachel's blueberry crumble tasted closer to a blueberry pie than anything else, but in a bar form, it was really nice. Rachel had ordered a straight up black coffee as a pour over, which I will admit was better than what I had ordered. I could not help myself but try this beautiful golden cup of desire and deliciousness. It was super clean, it had a rich chocolatey flavor to it, and it had a very low acidic content, which was awesome. That coffee is delicious. My flat white though did go really, really well with my caramel chocolate brownie, but this is just a prelude of what's to come. So the green place we wanted to go to doesn't open until 5.30, which gives us an hour to drink a whole bunch of... I'm having tequila. The thing about being someone who enjoys tequila in Scotland is that your varieties are very limited depending on where you go. And I don't know if I like it. Time for some Korean food. I'm excited. Kim's Mini Meals was one of the most highly rated restaurants in all of Edinburgh. It is a mom and pop shop Korean restaurant that has a really small interior, but a ton of personality. 
The menu is easy to get through, doesn't have a tremendous amount of options, but every option that they had looked amazing. The owner was saying that they cooked their galbi ribs for two days straight. I need to try that. And after we had ordered our food, they brought out just a few things, a touch of butternut squash soup, and all of those wonderful pickles and condiments that you get when you go into a Korean restaurant. Those condiments and sides are some of my favorite things about Korean restaurants because it kind of gets your appetite going. It makes you ready for your meal. It's not enough to fill you up, but it does get you started. It's really simple. It, I wonder if there's stock or if it's water. It was like really velvety. And our first dish up was a Korean pancake with scallions or a pajun. This is a fried pancake with scallions that comes out piping hot and has a ton of flavor behind it. That's super good. Yeah. This is the cutest little... What is this? But that was just the appetizer. Finally, my galbi ribs came out and it came in a dulcet, which is a Korean stone bowl that allows the broth to continue boiling once it hits the table. I had to wait just a few minutes before I dug in. Oh my God, I can't even pick it up. No, it's tender. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Look, watch, hold on. And you could see by the joy on my face at how delicious and tender these ribs actually were. Two days well spent. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ben, stop everything you're doing. These ribs were so tender, I could literally remove all of the meat with just my chopsticks right off of that bone. The meat itself was braised beautifully. It had a light sweetness to it that tasted of soy, maybe a touch of sugar, but the ginger just came through so well. These ribs, 10 out of 10 ribs. I've never had ribs this tender before. Like, I don't, I can't tell you the last time I did. And the best part about Dolcet is that it just gets better while it sits in the broth. These are some of the best ribs I've ever had. If you guys are ever in Edinburgh, please, please eat at Kim's Mini Meals. I think it was some, something like that. Some of the best Korean food I've ever had. Uh, yeah, for sure. So we're downtown Edinburgh right now off of the High Street Royal Mile. We're gonna go grab some breakfast at the place called The Larder. They look really, really good. I'm pretty excited for it. The Larder is a down and dirty Scottish style breakfast restaurant that had everything that you could really want from its beans and toast to its homemade sausages to its homemade black pudding or haggis. We were lucky enough that since we were visiting during a weekday, they didn't have a line out the door and we were able to walk right in and grab a table. The Larder's menu, although small, was highly customizable. You could add things to different entrees or dishes or just order a bunch of sides, kind of like what we did. Rachel wanted the vegetarian haggis so we went for that. I wanted beans and toast, so we got some of that, and we got some homemade bacon. So we got vegetarian haggis. I haven't had actual haggis, so I don't know how to compare it. Mm. It's creamy. It has like a creamy texture to it. Did you try it yet? Yeah. Yeah. Did we taste the same thing? Yeah. It's probably from the oats. And of course, we have to do the egg yolk test. This egg yolk was cooked really nicely, covered that toast beautifully, and I couldn't wait to get my stinking mouth all over that egg yolk, which sounds very dirty, but I couldn't help myself. Breakfast there was fantastic. I've never had veggie haggis before, and now I think it's time for a Bloody Mary. Do you want a Bloody Mary? We should get Bloody Marys with bacon. And luckily, the Royal McGregor hooked us up with Bloody Marias, which are Bloody Marys, but with tequila, because after a breakfast of eggs, beans, and toast, nothing washes it down better than a Bloody Maria. But the bartender mentioned we have to visit Royal Mile Whiskies, one of the premium whiskey sellers in all of Edinburgh. The amount of whiskies that they had were innumerable. You could not imagine how many they actually had. In this small shop, they had thousands of different whiskies, ranging from your $40 bottles to your $22,000 bottle of whiskey. We were here for quite a few hours speaking with the owners, picking up a few bottles of whiskey, and he had mentioned we have to go get some brownies. If you're ever in Edinburgh, head to Royal Mile Whiskies. Um, they, they are fantastic, super helpful, and they recommended to us a brownie shop that we're going to right now. And that brownie shop is actually called Zebra Coffee Co. They pull amazing shots of coffee, but they also have beautiful looking brownies. This is my happy place. 
The coffee shop itself was tiny on the inside, but it had a ton of character and charm where you just wanted to sit around and enjoy your coffee and maybe one of these amazing looking brownies, which we did get two of. You'll see in just a minute at which ones we picked up. So we just got brownies. We're gonna head over and get a couple more whiskeys. The gentleman at Royal Mile Whiskeys recommended Ensign Ewar, which I probably pronounced very terribly, as a pub of choice. And this pub does sell some whiskey special releases at cost. So they just charge you per ounce of whiskey. So for instance, this pour only cost us $7 per pour as opposed to potentially 20 or 30. Oh wow, yeah. I actually really like that. That's really nice. Yeah, that's good. Wow. Wait, which one is this one? Uh, this is the frequent flyers. Oh, frequent flyer miles. This, so this is what we need while we fly? Yeah, that's liquid. Oh, dude, this smells like caramel. Yeah, Did it you smell like this? Yeah. Wow. Good? Yeah, they're both really good. And I don't even like whiskey. Are you in your happy place? Yes. And you could be in your happy place if you had whiskey at that price, especially at Ensign Ewar, which everyone should come and hang out at. So we just had a little tasting of whiskey and they were pretty fantastic. But now we're going back to Wings because I think it's one of the only spots that I would go to twice on this trip because they're that damn good and they have so many flavors. We gotta try all the flavors. So back down the questionable alley, we went in through the doors of the TARDIS and down into the basement level of Wings. Wings has this second level that is more of a hangout spot than anything else. They have it set up with a Nintendo 64, really cool artwork, and on the other wall, they actually had a GameCube set up with another TV for us to play whatever games we wanted. The basement floor of Wings is the casual spot, and I would recommend you guys check that out, especially because you could play Lego Star Wars, which is a pretty fun game, especially eating wings, I will admit admit, but once the wings hit the table, Star Wars was no more to me and I gorged on a bunch of new wings while we watched the demo play out. We just love wings. We had our appetizer. We're going to head over to Pizza Geeks because their symbol is a Stormtrooper helmet plus a pizza paddle. So they have to be the best pizza in town. And on our way over to Pizza Geeks, we did pop into a few stores here and there to try to find gifts for people, which is always difficult. And usually we just default to buying whiskeys and sharing with them while we drink. Due to uh, crazy weather, we took a cab and we are at Pizza Geeks. Taking a cab was the right choice, so we weren't soaking wet when we walked into Pizza Geeks, a pizza restaurant that is laid out to have all of the themes you could ever want from your childhood. Everything from Super Mario to Legend of Zelda to Star Wars. Even their pizzas were themed after all of your childhood memories. The Mario, the Luigi, the Incredible Hulk, Dragon Ball Z, Super Saiyan Dragon Ball Z, which we did order, which are absolutely phenomenal because you can pick whatever toppings you want to go on the inside. So just walking into this place, I can't tell you how excited I am to try everything here. They have Dragon Balls. We're getting Dragon Balls. And we went with salami and goat cheese Dragon Balls with mayo and sweet chili on the side. These are the Dragon Balls filled with salami and goat cheese. A little bit of vegan mayo. Oh yeah, that goat cheese is good. Yeah, dough is like crispy. They're so simple, but yet so delicious. And being able to pick your own filling just gives it that special little touch. They're a great way to start your pizza adventure. The pizza master behind the counter allowed me to film him making our pizzas. And this is what they had looked like before they hit the oven. When they come out, they come uncut, which I do really appreciate. Because if you do let your pizza sit for just a minute before cutting it, the dough doesn't get super soggy on the bottom. You always should let your pizza rest right out of the oven. Rachel ordered the wildling, which was a garlic rosemary base, a touch of spinach, butternut squash, goat cheese, and sweet chili jam, which she opted to get on the side so I could try it because she's not a fan of sweet chili jam. I have to try it with the sauce though. Dude, that's perfect. The sweetness of the squash and the tangy bit of goat cheese really helped pull everything together, but the Johnny Blaze is really what I wanted. It was mozzarella, pepperoni, red onion, jalapenos, and chili flakes, 
on their beautiful crispy crust that is cooked perfectly. I could easily eat two of these pizzas in one sitting. It's time for brownies. So after all that pizza, all that rain, and all that beer, uh, I decided that I just wanted to come back to the flat and have some of that brownie. So this is the Cadbury egg brownie from Zebra. Oh my God, it's creamy. It's chewy. I wonder if they use marshmallow fluff because it tastes really, really, it has a lot of vanilla flavor to it. Mmm, I don't know. I should have eaten this sooner. Oh my God. It is our last day in Edinburgh and I think we're gonna actually head back into Glasgow for our flight. We're gonna see if we can find something fun to eat. Hopefully we can make it with these massive bags. We bought a lot of alcohol. So we toted all of our luggage and all of our alcohol to Edinburgh Station to get a train into Glasgow for our flight. Edinburgh Station is one of the most confusing stations I've ever been to. But after we finally got on the train over to Glasgow, we were greeted with these beautiful sights of the countryside and we were able to just relax for a few hours before we finally got back into Glasgow to get ready for our flight. And as soon as we got off the train, we were both hungry, so we made our way to Bread Meets Bread, a sandwich shop that specializes in some of the most over-the-top sandwiches I've seen in a long time, and of course, I had to get the Wolf of Vincent Street. This was a brioche bun, a beef burger, pulled pork, bacon, and provolone cheese. We had a side of buffalo fries and a rubid on Rachel's side. This looks so good. Burger, bacon, and pulled pork. I'm definitely going on the diet when we get back. Yeah? This is ridiculous. Yeah. I contemplated my life decisions taking a bite into this meat monstrosity, but as soon as I did, the tanginess and the tenderness and everything came through into what can only be described as the meat sweats, immediate meat sweats. When we get back home, I'm making pulled pork. Rachel's Reuben pastrami came with smoked and steamed pastrami, a good amount of Russian dressing, house-made pickles, Swiss cheese, and a ton of sauerkraut. I actually think I like the Reuben more than the monster monstrosity meat sandwich. Now that we're gonna have the meat sweats for another four or five days after all that, I think some tea would be really nice. Because you really think you're gonna order tea when you run into nice coffee shops all around the city, don't you? Kiss Hippo pulled an amazing shot of espresso. They had a ton of sweets on tap. I had to restrain myself and not pick up any of the sweets and settle for coffee. I decided to take our coffees to go because uh, they had like six seats in there. And to my detriment, taking the coffee to go led us to Hotel Chocolate. This is a wonderful chocolate shop in downtown Glasgow. They had such an amazing variety of chocolates that I just wanted wanted to do the whole kid in a candy store thing and stick my arm into a shelf, put the cart down below, and sprint as quickly as possible, commandeering as much chocolate as possible without thinking about it. This way, I didn't have to pick and choose as to which chocolates I would buy. They even had crazy things like this brownie egg, which was this really beautifully molded egg that was filled with brownies. Literally a kid in a candy shop right now. What is a tiddly pot? I think there's like little bits of chocolate. But the real question is if you should smash like so we can make chocolate cookie dough sandwiches. These are ice cream sandwiches that have cookie dough and some kind of chocolatey ice cream sandwiched together. I don't understand, my brain does not work. This is pretty genius. This is, this is a great idea and a lot of chocolate. Lamb and mint, look, look. But after ooing and aahing over all of this chocolate and this ostrich chocolate egg, we had to part ways with Scotland, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Inverness, Perth, and everywhere in between. It's been real Glasgow. We are, uh, we're out of here. So we're making our way home and we found out that Trump just declared that all flights from Europe would be banned for 30 days. And since we are flying from the UK to Amsterdam, we would have been caught up in that. Luckily, we're flying out today which is uh thursday or wednesday in the u.s and uh, hopefully nothing else changes because uh otherwise we'll be in scotland for a while and this my friends was the last sad meal i had in glasgow at the airport before we took our flight 
oatmeal. So unfortunately that last clip with the oatmeal was the last bit of footage we had from our trip. That was taken at a Holiday Inn as part of the airport where we were trying to go from Glasgow to Amsterdam then back to Portland. Unfortunately with everything that was happening, all the closures, all the shutdowns, we were one day ahead of the actual flight restrictions coming out of Europe. Flying from Glasgow to Amsterdam was fine but going from Amsterdam back into the US may have been a problem. The biggest problem was that our flight from Amsterdam into Portland had left while we were still still flying from Glasgow to Amsterdam and we were in a bit of a pickle to say the least. Rachel and I pulled the whole home alone thing running through the airport. We ran from our terminal to a Seattle terminal to try to get from Amsterdam to Seattle before all of the closures happened. That flight was full. They ended up booking us into Vancouver, Canada, which was about a seven hour drive or so for us. But eventually we were able to fly from Amsterdam to Vancouver after around a four hour layover and then laid over in Vancouver. Finally flew from Vancouver into Portland and got home safely and kind of opened up to everything that was happening. It was honestly overwhelming like it was for a lot of people. To all the people we met along the way in Scotland, the people who showed us all about whiskey, the heritage of Scotland, showed us around the museums, people we may have had a bite with or sat next to who were just honestly overwhelmingly hospitable. Rachel and I can't thank you guys enough for allowing us to show you these experiences as well as being part of these experiences and I hope that soon we can do this all over again in hopefully Tokyo, because that is the next destination. My name is Chef PK, get subscribed. Remember, keep playing with your food. Okay, see you guys in the next one. This is my room. <laughs>